Welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. On the show today, I'm taking a look at Espro's new ultralight travel press. Now, as we speak, this is available through Kickstarter only, so Espro has just launched this new travel press, uh, and they're calling it the ultralight travel press because it's pretty darn light. So this is just like their other travel presses in many respects. It's got the press in it, and it's vacuum insulated. It's stainless steel. There's a lot of really impressive things about it. Now, this isn't just an unboxing and review, so I've actually been playing around with it quite a bit. I, I did a bit of traveling this past weekend, and I took it with me, and I used it extensively just to get a good idea of it. And I've actually brewed some in it uh, a couple hours ago. It's been a busy morning, and so I, I tossed an extra brew in here, and I figured we'll crack it open and see how we did. So, empty the travel press with the press in it. Uh, so if you're familiar with uh, Espro's other travel presses, and I'll show you this in a moment, there's a French press mechanism. They have their own double filtered system, which is makes a really good cup of coffee. So this whole sort of canteen, if you will, plus the press in it with nothing else, uh, comes in at nine and a half ounces or 269 grams. If you take the press out and you just use it as a water bottle, then it's uh, 7.4 ounces. So it actually is really, um, really light. And I've, I've, been, I've been really impressed by a lot of things. So I'm gonna talk about the pros and some of the cons that I've found, and then uh, we'll just see what we see. So uh, first off, it's a little different from the other Espro. Uh, it's very narrow, so the, the screw cap actually kind of wraps around the outside. It does have this nice handle on it, and you can seal it pretty well. It's got a gasket in there. You might be able to see steam still coming off. So it's one of the things that, that I've been really impressed with this travel press, this um, double insulated thermal travel mug, is that it is super impressive at keeping things hot. I probably should have gotten a thermometer, but um, this is still really hot. And I did brew this, I filled this two hours ago. So, and that's still a hot cup of coffee. Oh, that's good though. So that's the one thing about the Espro is it does make a really, really good French press. Um, I'm just gonna pull this over here and here we are, the press mechanism on the inside. Just pull this out. If you take this out, you can just use this as a travel mug, um, which is really nice. That's still hot. I wanted to take this apart and show you the filter. I guess what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a picture of this and put it over the screen so you can see what I'm talking about with the double layers of filter here. Uh, but it's, it's, um, it's pretty straightforward uh, product. Aside from that, it makes a good smooth cup of coffee. The double filters, and the fine mesh um, do a really good job of keeping uh, even even the small uh, gritty bits of sludge out of your cup. It's not 100% perfect, but it's better than anything else that I French pressed with if that's of interest to you. I'm gonna try it and dump out the rest here just so I can show you, approximately show you, how thin this looks. I maybe should have thought about that beforehand, but I really wanted to brew some coffee on here. So, uh, hopefully I can demonstrate and show you on here. Um, I don't know if you can tell how thin that looks. When I first got this and I looked at it, and I, it's, it's so much thinner than other vacuum insulated um, presses and travel mugs that I've had that I was quite skeptical. When I brew on this though, and I'm brewing with you know 200 degree water, put 200 degree water in here, and let it sit, even after a few minutes, even after you know, 10, 15 minutes, I can, I can almost not tell that there's really hot water in here. It is, it is so seriously impressive at holding in heat. So that's, I mean, it's, it's just super well made. So like I said, uh, I, went a bit, I went traveling with this and I took this and some coffee and a hand grinder and just tried some things out you're gonna brew a really great cup of coffee with this and you can do it anywhere. It's gonna hold your coffee hot for a long time. Yesterday morning, as I was uh, doing the last leg of my travel, I woke up and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna press this, I'm gonna throw it in my bag and I'm gonna see how it is in a couple hours. Uh, and I did just that. Uh, just kind of like I did this morning. Did, did the full French press, put it in, screwed it up, put it in the bag. And then, and then came back a couple hours later and opened it and it, the, there was still steam coming out of it and it was still actually too hot to drink, uh, which was really impressive. <laughs> the fact that it keeps the coffee that hot is a little problematic if this is the only thing you have to drink with. Like if you have to brew and drink out of this, um, it can take 
a really long time for it to cool down enough to actually be able to drink out of it. I found that either I have to sit with the cap off for a while and, and just kind of gently, gently nurse drinking it uh, or pour the, the coffee into another mug. Um, so you have the challenge of, of the coffee being too hot. Um, another, another little bit of a challenge is cleaning this. You really need to be kind of at a sink or some kind of faucet or spigot. Uh, it's probably cooled down enough I can open this. Um, um, really want to get in there and just rinse everything off. The mesh is so fine, you can easily get a buildup if you don't clean this uh, thoroughly. And by thoroughly, I just mean running water. You don't need to like use soap and water, but you really do want to clean this after every use uh, or you're gonna get some buildup pretty quickly. On the subject of the ceiling, so like I said, I used this to travel this weekend. And at one point I did have a problem with the uh, coffee leaking slightly. And I'm not sure exactly what caused that problem. Uh, I just noticed that when taking it out of the bag, I'd had like a drop dripping. And then when I opened this up, there I could see like coffee kind of around the outside. Now, when, when I had it in the bag, I, I just put it in my backpack uh, and I put it upright in the backpack. And uh, the only thing I did make sure as far as the backpack goes is to, as I made sure I kept the backpack pretty much upright, uh, but I wasn't uh, handling it gingerly. You know, I threw it around my shoulder when I needed to or toss it on a bench when I needed to. Um, so I'm sure this was sloshing around a bit and maybe I didn't have this screwed down completely. Uh, this, the, one of the only minor things about this is that it, it, it's a little hard to tell when it's completely shut. It, it, there's no visual cue that it's completely closed. Uh, and that's maybe a nitpicky thing. And you can kind of feel when you can't turn it anymore for sure. And what you're trying to do is get this gasket kind of um, shoved on the inside there to seal it off. That's kind of the idea. Uh, but if it's not completely closed, I could easily see coffee, if you're sloshing around, coffee leaking out. And I'm, one of the things that could be happening there is that um, if you put even just a little bit too much coffee in the press, and you're actually pressing, and you're doing your whole, doing the whole press, and then screwing this on to go, what you have to realize is that there's actually, there's physically coffee in here that's gonna, that this is gonna run into. So what can happen, sometimes the plunger might not be able to go down far enough. And it's hard to tell where that point is and how far it should be going down. Uh, if you follow kind of standard brew guidelines, so this morning I did, I did 24 grams of coffee and about uh, 370, 375 grams of water. That's close to 16 to one. I was able to get this sort of press handle down to about that point. I'm not sure this is going to be illustrative, uh, but you can see it, it kind of sticks up a little bit. The, the cap here has this piece coming up that will hit that. Uh, it's kind of what the gasket is, is wrapped around, but there is an indentation which has some room for this. Uh, I mean, I can see, I can see a marking on here indicating that I have indeed been screwing this very tightly against that. Anyways, it's possible yesterday morning that I, I used a little bit too much coffee. I didn't measure it as precisely as today. And that perhaps the, the plunger was up a little too far and prevented this from completely closing on this. So that is just something to think about. Also, I do notice just as a side note that this handle can get really hot really fast. So just be careful. If you're, if you're just touching the top, you'll be fine. Uh, but uh, the, the very hot water in here will heat up this, this plunger very quickly. Uh, Espro's other press, the, the lid that completely seals actually screws into the thing and it's very clear when it's completely closed. So um, this one, I think you just wanna kind of be aware about how it's actually closing. If you don't have the press in here, then that's never gonna be an issue. I'm, I'm just kind of assuming that my slight, ever so slight leakage problem yesterday was related to 
the plunger not being down far enough, which would have been related to me putting too much coffee in there. Um, just something to keep in mind. Today, I really just wanted to talk about this version of the Espro es Press, the ultralight, which is indeed impressively light and slim and minimalistic. It makes a really nice travel coffee set and um, brews coffee well, keeps it hot. You can take out the press and just use it as a travel mug. Um, so that's really nice. If you want to uh, watch more about my thoughts on, on the original Espro, I talk, I go a bit more in depth on uh, the, the usages of a travel press and, and pros and cons from that perspective. I'll link to the video below uh, and uh, you, can, you can watch some more on there. For now, this has been Espro's Ultralight Travel Press. It's really neat. If you're interested in it, I highly recommend going to the Kickstarter and jumping on the Kickstarter because you can get one at a serious discount. And because it's Espro, because they have been producing for a long time, it's not going to be a long wait. I think, um, I probably should have just <laughs> written this down, but I think off the top of my head, uh, the Kickstarter schedule is slated to be shipping within a couple of months. They've already met their initial production goals, so uh, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, it's a good company. It's just a really good opportunity to get in a launch of this and get a nice uh, discounted Espro Press. So I think right now the uh, tiers that are available still are the $30 tiers. It's probably going to go up from there soon. Uh, so jump on it. Get yourself an Espro Travel Press and enjoy some great coffee wherever you may be.